We give all the thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. We give our thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. Eternal Father, we want to give you thanks for what you have done in this great convention of open doors in the continent, continent three, and most especially in this Middle East one. We appreciate you, God, for the first day. Thank you for the second day. Thank you for today, the grand finale. We bless your name for all the activity package and all the blessing that we have received. Oh God, now that I need to say something before my Father in the Lord will bring words to us. I pray that those things that you will use my mouth to say will bring blessing to everyone in the house. I pray, Lord Almighty, that this particular day you will bless us more than we can ever imagine. Thank you, gracious Redeemer. Thank you, Heavenly King. And we pray that no one will be part of this particular convention, this message, and will go back the same. And Lord, we covenanted, we give you the glory. Take possession of my mouth and my head, that nothing will be said amiss, and you will take the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We appreciate God once again for this day. And I want to thank my Father in the Lord and um, our mommy in the Lord for the opportunity we have been given. I want to say something uh, before my Father in the Lord will be speaking to us on open doors. Open doors. Like you know that the main message will come from our dear daddy in the Lord, our Father the general overseer of the redeemed Christian church of God. I'm reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 9 to 11. Acts, chapter 12, 9 to 11. And he went out and followed him. And we not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they had passed the first and the second word, they came unto the iron gate that leaded unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a shorty that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the people of the Jews. The Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word in the name of Jesus. Open doors. In the text that I read to us is the text when Peter was put in prison. The king Herod has been pursuing the life of the disciple for destruction. And he has he took James, the elder, the, the elders, and beheld him. And this was the story of how Peter was put in prison awaiting his execution. But the angels of the Lord came overnight and released him. And they passed through the door. Because all the doors leading to where Peter was were declared open. I pray today, I don't know which place, which door, doors have been closed against you. That as the Lord did for Peter, God will open doors for you in the name of Jesus. No force or forces can stand against you, can stand against your moment, 
when it is time for you to receive your freedom. And I know you are getting out of that jungle of closed door. And I believe that the expectation of your enemy, and I pray, shall be turned to nothing. The open doors that God has opened, you will be able to enter in the name of Jesus. When God opened the door for Peter, he thought he was dreaming. And I say the same thing to you, listening to me, that when the Lord will open your door, or will have opened your door, you will think, maybe I am dreaming. The Lord will make it so much more. What are doors? Doors are means of entrance. What are doors? Doors are permission barrier. What are doors? They are barrier for opening and for closing an entrance way. Doors are something that admits you or give you access into inside or inner circle. Doors are gates for security. What are doors? They are protection for treasures. When you lock your door, your treasures are, protect, are, they are protected. What are doors? They are admittance mechanism. They are regulatory instruments. And I pray, I said today, if you say amen, your doors will be open in the name of Jesus. As long as we have God who determined to open doors, there are many people who struggle to have an open door, but they didn't. Why? Let me mention a few reasons. People are living under a closed door because of their unredeemed mind. They are not redeemed. To be redeemed is to be born again. To be redeemed is to yield your life to Jesus Christ. You remember the story in Genesis chapter 3 where you pick it up from verse 14 to 19. Genesis 3, 14 to 19. The Lord declared to Adam and to Eve and to the devil judgment. But in particular, he said to Adam, there will be enmity between him and the seed of Adam and the devil. No wonder we struggle because of unredeemed mind. But when you are redeemed, a new door is open. In Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 3, Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 3, the Bible said he made us alive by the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. So people doors are closed because of unredeemed life. Number two, why are people doors closed? Christian living in sin. Any Christian living in sin cannot secure a door open. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 5, 1 to 7. The Bible said to us there that we should leave all the things that pertain to worldliness. And it mentions certain steam, foolish talking, filthiness, and the like. Any believer, any Christian living in sin, definitely doors cannot be opened. Why are people living on that closed door? Number three, when we do not lay aside every weight of every sin, we cannot carry extra bond, extra load to follow him. Hebrews chapter uh, 12, 1 to 2. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 2. The Bible said, we should lay down the yoke and the load that easily beset. We need to do that. Why is it that so many people are supposed to enjoy open doors? They are living under closed door. Number four, we focus too much on our failures and shortcomings. 
We focus too much on our failures and shortcomings. Paul, in Philippians 3, 13 to 14, Philippians 3, 13 to 14, he said, one thing I do, forgetting the past. Once you are redeemed, you can trust God that you no longer re remember your sin. Stop reminding God your sin. He has forgotten. And so many people are still looking backward to that failure instead of looking forward to what God can do. Why is it that people who are supposed to be living under open doors are living outside the, clo outside the closed doors? Number five, mistreating other people. When you mistreat other people, you, you set a stage for misfortune. When you mistreat people of God, your employer, children, your colleagues, your subordinate, the congregants, the Bible said, I am not the one that said it. In Proverbs 11, 17, Proverbs 11, 17, the Bible says, sought people, they are living under curse. Read Luke chapter 6, 31. Six, Luke 6, 31. You need to treat other people well. You need to do good to everyone, including the people that you thought they are not born again. They are not born again. Every human being, they are entitled to, to uh, their respect. When doors are closed, there are so many signs that you see. When doors are closed, there will be stagnation. People will work hard and there will be little to show. When you read the book of Genesis 4.12, Genesis 4.12, the Lord said to Cain, you will labor hard and get little for the same. When the doors are closed, number two, you be, that fellow will become a fugitive and a vagabond. The same Genesis 4.12. Genesis 4.12. So when the doors of any human being is closed, it is, he will have instability. It will not be predictable. He will not be able to hold something special, something down. Marriage will not work. Work will not work. The Lord said to Cain because of his sin that he will be fugitive. Some people cannot hold relationship. They are in church. They can't hold career. They are not stable in the ministry. They are running away from the law. I mean, their plan is unstable. It's because the doors are closed. When the door is closed, what is the sign? Number three, there will be general reversal. General reversal. It is it will be going from good to bad. And... They'll be talking about good old days. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, 5 to 7. Genesis 13, 5 to 7. is the story of Lot. That is, he moved from abundance to emptiness. It's because the doors has been closed. Number four. When the doors of any human being is closed, they will miss out at the last minute. They will always miss out at the last minute. Everything may be, be going well. Suddenly, they will, they will miss out. Genesis 27, 1 to 38. Genesis 27, 1 to 38. Esau missed out. He was supposed to be number one. He was supposed to be the carrier of uh, the blessing of the family. But alas, he couldn't do it. His soul is bad tried. When the door of any man is closed, number five, what works for others will not work for them. What is working for A will not work for that fellow. The story of Eli was very, very instructive. First Samuel 4, 1 to 11. First Samuel 4, 1 to 11. Israel were defeated in the day of Eli. Even act of the act of the covenant was taken. When doors are closed, number six, 
there be unusual and in, inexplic inexplainable losses. You can't explain why you are losing things. Agai chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. Agai 1, 6 to 9. I mean, suddenly, you just be losing things. When doors are closed, number seven, failure despite a fruitful location. Location is not the issue. The issue is open door. In a desert land, Isaac planted and he got multiple results. When doors are closed, even if you are in a good location, it won't work. It may not work. Second Kings chapter 7, 1 to 5, and read 17 to 20. Second Kings chapter, five, chapter 7, Second Kings chapter 7, verse 2, Second Kings chapter 7, verse 2, and verses 17 to 20. It was a story of a country who was well located. But they have family. I pray today, every closed door and all closed doors shall be opened unto you in the name of Jesus. What are the type of doors that needed to be opened for you? One, you need medical door. Medical door. There are so many people, even as they are watching me, as they are hearing me, they are believers, they speak in tongues, but they are living in ear hurt. God can do something about your situation. In the book of John chapter 5, 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, a man has been sick for 38 years until his door was opened and he received healing. You will receive your healing in the name of Jesus. We read in 2 Kings chapter 5, 1 to 14, 2 Kings Chapter 5, 1 to 14, about Naaman, the Lord healed him of his problem. Medical door must be open. Material door must be open. In the book of Luke, chapter 5, 1 to 7, Luke 5, 1 to 7, Peter fished all night until his door was open and he caught so much fishes that the net began to break. Marital door need to open. Marital door need to open. Proverbs 18.22. Proverbs 18.22. He that findeth a wife, the same thing he that findeth an husband, until the doors of marriage is open. You, will, you may be handsome. You may be beautiful. But people and things will be running away. Not only marital door, your mental door must be open. Mental door must be open. In Daniel chapter 2, 20 to 22, Daniel 2, 20 to 22, the Bible said Daniel was 10 times better than the rest of the student. And the Bible said to us, wisdom, in the book of, read in the book of James 1, 3 to 5, James 1, 3 to 5, he said, let him, of course, your ministerial door and many-sided doors must be open. Ministerial doors, many-sided doors must be open to you. And it can open today. And I pray that your door shall be open today in the name of Jesus. I mean your doors shall be open in the name of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 41, 39, Genesis chapter 41, 39, Joseph was referred to here by Pharaoh. And, and Pharaoh said, There is none as wise as thou art, and there is none as wise that, that can do what you have done. And he became the next in command. When your doors are open, there will be divine presence and divine presence will bring favor. When your doors are open, there will be divine presence and divine presence will bring open, I mean, will bring favor. 
Divine presence will bring open doors of favor. In Luke 1 28, Luke 1 28, they talk about Jesus Christ that they had favor with God and favor with men. When your doors are open, there will be divine promotion. Psalm 89 17. Psalm 89 17. There will be divine promotion. There will be divine provision when your doors are open. Exodus 3.21. Exodus 3.21. There will be divine prosperity. Divine prosperity. Because it is the wishes of God. According to Third John 2. For you are made to prosper. When your doors are open, there will be divine comforts around you. Ruth chapter 2 verse 13. Divine comfort. You will have comfort and you will have rest from all the moving here and there. When your doors are open, your doors will bring to you abundant joy. Abundant joy. Job 33, 26. Job 33, 26. When your doors are open, there will be salvation. That's why I want to encourage all of you who are here to give your life to Jesus Christ as you are listening to me, that when my Father in the Lord come to the podium to speak and he made the altar call, please yield to him immediately. Yield to him. Psalm 106 verse 4. Psalm 106 verse 4 said, when your doors are open, there will be salvation. When your doors are open, you will have what I call marital fulfillment. Marital fulfillment. Now many of you who are married, a marriage is supposed to bring happiness and joy to you, but you are under heavy, heavy body. That's why God is bringing this program to you. Ruth chapter 2, 10 and 13. Ruth chapter 2 verses 10 and 13 talks about how she moved from her native land and God settled this woman called Ruth. And when your doors are open, all your enemies are perpetually silenced. Whatever it is that the enemy is doing in your life, they will be perpetually silenced from today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How, do, how then do I secure an open doors? How can I get my door open? Number one, you must repent from your sins. Walk in repentance. Repent of all your sins. The Bible said in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, Galatians 6 7, he said, whatever you sow, you will reap. Sow according to flesh, corruption will come. And in John chapter 3, verse 3 to 6, John 3, 3 to 6, what is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Repent of your sin. How do I secure an open door? Number two, strong decision for the Lord. No matter what all other people are doing, you need to make sure that you follow the Lord wholeheartedly. You follow the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. Joshua said, if it seems evil for any of you to follow the Lord, he said, as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord. Rehab was a good example. In Joshua 6.25, Rehab and Alot in Joshua 6 25. He followed, she followed the Lord. And when destruction came, I mean, she was spared. You need to follow the Almighty God with all your heart, with all your mind. How do I secure an open door? Number three. 
you must never despise the day of small beginning. Thank God for what you are doing in this particular region. But don't despise the little work you are doing because it will surely grow. Everything starts from the beginning. The only journey that starts from the top is the journey to the grave. Everything develops from underneath. Even Jesus has to be carried as a baby. Don't despise it. Number four, how do I secure an open door? Is it to be a promoter of the kingdom. Be a promoter of the kingdom. The number one way to secure favor from God and to secure an open door is to be a promoter of the kingdom. In Psalm 102, I like that particular chapter. Psalm 102, 13 and 14. Psalm 102, 13 and 14. It says, Now we arise and have mercy on me. I think he's saying it, the same thing on you because the time to favor you has come. When the door opens, favor is inevitable, but you must be a promoter of the kingdom. Jesus was talking, and he said in Matthew 6, 3, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. You need to seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all other things shall be added. You must be a kingdom promoter. Be a kingdom promoter so that God can open the door for you. And anyone who is a kingdom promoter must live in radical obedience. In radical obedience, look at what he said in the book of Mark chapter 16, 15 to 17. Mark chapter 16, 15 to 17. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the good news. He said the same thing in Matthew chapter 28, 18 and 19, 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. He said, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel. In the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 8, Mark 1 8, he said you will receive Holy Ghost. I will receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be a witness. Radical obedient. And lastly, you want your door to be open there need to be a warfare prayer out of a sincere heart. Warfare prayer. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. We wrestle against powers, principality, rulers of darkness. And we have to do it in a very, very mighty way. Before David can be called a killer, or I mean a giant killer, he has to kill Goliath. Before he could be licensed as a captain, he has to kill Goliath. You need to warfare. And remember, the Bible said to us, in that 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, that we, we, we are living as a human being in the flesh, but we don't war after the flesh. And he said, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of a stronghold. No wonder. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18 said to us, Matthew 18, 18 said to us, that we need to bind certain things, that whatever we bind, shall be banned the devil. You want to secure an open door. You need to repent. You need to have a strong desire to follow the Lord. Never you deny the day of a small beginning. You need to be a kingdom promoter. And a kingdom promoter has a radical obedience to what God has commanded. And of course, there must be a warfare. Because he that asketh, receive it. Matthew chapter 7 verse 8. The corollary is that he that will not ask it, will not receive it. I want you to bow wherever you are because my father and the Lord will be bringing words in a short while. And when it is time to surrender your life, let God 
have your life. Let him know that you really desire sincere opening of your door. Shall we pray together? Eternal Father, thank you. I have brought this word as a rider to what my Father and the Lord will be, will be saying to us. Mighty and holy God, I pray for all the heart that have been prepared for this word. We secure their door open today. Every closed door against their life. I ask of you, my Father, that you who can do all things, you will take over and we move all the barrier to the opening of their doors in the name of Jesus. Even though God has the, received the main message now, let the glory of God descend like never before. Let the hand of the almighty king of glory rest upon every one of them. Thank you, eternal father. Bless us together. Even as we take the word from our father in the Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Everyone under the sound of my voice, we never miss their door. We, are, we never miss their, we never miss their door. Oh God. And Lord, those doors are closed for ages shall be open today. Thank you. And that by the time we finish this convention, we'll all be dancing for joy, singing for glory. In Jesus' most mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Shortly, my Father and the Lord, that the ear, the boy, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian church of God, will be bringing you the main message. God bless you.